Revisiting Quantum Computers A quantum computer is located within a refrigerator, insulated from the rest of the universe at a temperature only slightly over absolute zero. If the hype is to be considered, this emerging technology represents the promise of the future. It can totally transform our way of life through its supercharged computation. However, quantum computers aren't the newest supercomputers, they're something else. And we need to comprehend the underlying physics underpinning the notion of quantum computing before discussing its potential applications. We'll need to explore the quantum mechanical subatomic world, a smaller and more foreign realm than anything we can understand instinctively. Feynman's concept one of the most significant scientists of the 20th century hit a severe hurdle in the 1980s. Richard Feynman was ravenous in search of a glimpse into the quantum cosmos. However, quantum systems are inherently brittle, and their information is hidden from us. Feynman sought to create a simulation since he could not directly see quantum occurrences. It wasn't long before it was obvious that this computer wasn't capable. The computation cost started to dramatically increase as he added particles to the quantum systems he was modeling. Feynman concluded that the increasing complexity of quantum calculations just can't be kept up with by classical computers scaling up quickly enough. Then he achieved success. What if he could create a tool composed entirely of quantum components? The best method to delve into the intricacies of the quantum world would be to use a device that operates under quantum physics. The quantum computer concept first emerged, and by coming up with it, Feynman had begun to create a link between computer technology and quantum physics. It's crucial to first comprehend what makes anything quantum and how quantum computing functions. This calls for a discussion of the fundamental idea in quantum physics known as amplitudes. The classical laws of probability tell us the likelihood of receiving tails if we toss a coin 20 times. We total the probabilities for every scenario that could result in that makes perfect sense. However, the quantum universe is not governed by common sense. You can imagine a subatomic particle before you measure it as a wave of probability that lives in a virtual black box, a quantum system with numerous possibilities for where it might be. At its core, quantum mechanics is a modification of probabilistic laws. These distinct probability criteria from the ones we are used to are also where the strength of quantum computing originates. Probabilities and amplitudes are closely linked concepts. They aren't probabilities though. Probability is invariably a number between zero and one, which is a significant distinction. Amplifications are complex numbers though, and this implies that they adhere to distinct rules. Consequently, if I want to know the total amplitude for something to occur, I must add up the amplitudes for all the potential outcomes. However, when I combine amplitudes, I discover a brand new phenomenon. A particle may travel to a specific location in one way with a positive amplitude and another with a negative amplitude. If that occurs, the two amplitudes can cancel each other out, resulting in a total amplitude of zero which would indicate that the phenomenon would never occur. Therefore, the likelihood that you will actually see something when you gaze there is related to the amplitudes. This is the main insight that quantum mechanics offers into the nature of reality, that a physical system may be depicted in terms of a set of amplitudes, and the linear transformation of these amplitudes, by some alteration to these amplitudes, is how a physical system evolves through time. But how might amplitudes be used by quantum computers to store and process information in a quantum way? It's a qubit, then. It serves as the rudimentary building block of quantum computation. Qubits are similar to bits in a traditional computer, but significantly different. A bit is a string of binary numbers that can only be 0 or 1 and holds information in binary form. Form. However, since qubits are composed of subatomic particles, they function using subatomic logic. Qubits can be linear combinations of 0 and 1, 0 or what are known as qubits. Quantum computing is based on a flexible arrangement of amplitudes. A qubit resides in a state known as superposition before measurement. Consider it the quantum equivalent of a probability distribution with each qubit having a certain amplitude for being zero and a different amplitude for being one. In contrast to classical computers, quantum computers can store and manipulate enormous amounts of data thanks to superposition. 
Entanglement is a phenomenon that ensures when two or more qubits are connected to one another when they are in this closed state of superposition. This implies that they have mathematical relationships when we measure their final results, the characteristic correlations between components of a quantum system that differ from the correlations we often observe in the classical world are known as quantum entanglement. It might be compared to a book because the information is not contained in the individual pages but rather in the correlations between them. When you look at the pages individually, all you see is random nonsense. Additionally, you must collectively look at a lot of pages at once to read the book. However, it is incredibly expensive to describe extremely heavily entangled situations using regular bits. Imagine having a basic 10 qubit computer. It could parallel store 210 values. With a traditional computer, you would require 16 kilobytes or 16,000 bits to express this entangled setup. More classical bits are needed to implement a system with 500 entangled qubits than there are atoms in the entire universe. Feynman argued that conventional computers weren't scalable for simulating quantum mechanics, and this is exactly what he meant by that. A quantum computer requires the measurement of information from the qubits in order to produce an output. The issue is that quantum system transforms into a classical state when it is measured. You collapse a qubit state if you examine it and ask it, for example, if it is zero or one. You compel it to choose between becoming a zero or a one. Anything can carry information about whether a qubit is zero or one. Thus, for instance, if that information is captured in radiation escaping from the quantum computer, the impact on the qubit will be the same as if the qubit had been tested to determine whether it was a zero or one. The amplitudes turn into probabilities when the system is viewed. We must utilize interference to get an answer from the quantum system that isn't merely a random result of chance, like the toss of a coin. There is interference in classical physics. When two waves in a pool collide, one above the surface and the other below the surface, canceling the other out. Amplitudes only cause interference when they're added together. The total amplitude for something to occur would be zero if it could occur in one way with an amplitude of half and another way with an amplitude of minus half. You perform this in the well-known double slit experiment. When you block one of the paths, you see that something that previously could not happen is now possible. A quantum algorithm is this. By designing a deterministic series of qubit gates, researchers can use interference to their advantage. The amplitudes constructively add up as a result of these qubit gates. This implies that they will increase the likelihood of seeing one of the correct responses in a way that is mathematically assured. A quantum algorithm is this. How, one would wonder, could one focus all of this on the correct response if one does not already know which response is correct? This is the precise reason why creating quantum algorithms is challenging and why a whole field has been researching it for decades. There have been a few significant advancements in quantum algorithms since 1994, with theoretic uses in industries including cybersecurity and search engine optimization. However, the majority of industry professionals believe that quantum computers are most likely to be helpful for the purpose for which they were designed, when a physicist was intrigued about the intricate structure of our universe. The prospect of using quantum computers to investigate physics intrigues me. It's still up in the air whether or not it will result in financial gain for anyone and whether there will be immediate applications. But it's an exciting period at least for physicists. The reality is that we don't yet know what the most significant application of quantum computers will be. I have no doubt that once we have a quantum computer to experiment with, we'll discover incredible uses for it and we can't yet imagine. That's it on quantum computers. What are your thoughts on this piece of technology changing our lives? Let us know your observations and thoughts in the comment section below. If this video was insightful for you, then go on and like this video. Please, Kindly subscribe to our channel and click on the bell button for more of our updates.